Today I'll show you how to test timestamps and color in Echidna. Here I have a simple test function called Echidna test pass, and it returns the state variable which is initially set to true. Now when we run a test in Echidna, this function will only fail if Echidna is able to call this function set fail. When it does call this function, it will set pass to false. So this test, Echidna test pass, will fail. For Echidna to be able to call this function set fail, the current timestamp has to be greater than or equal to delay plus created at. Created at is the timestamp when the contract is deployed, and delay is set to 7 days. So if Echidna can fast forward the timestamp to more than 7 days after this contract is deployed, then it will be able to call this function, set pass to false, and the function will fail. Let's give it a try. Inside my terminal, I'll run Echidna inside Docker by typing docker run dash it dash dash rm. Dash dash rm means that after you exit Docker, then delete the container as well. Dash b. We'll load the current directory into dash code by typing pwd colon slash code. So here we're saying load current directory to dash code. And the image that we're going to be using is trail of bits slash eve security toolbox. Once inside Docker, we'll go to slash code by typing cd code. And this is where the contract we're going to be testing today is located at. If I hit ls, the contract that we're going to be testing today is echidna test time and caller. So to test with echidna, I'll type echidna dash test. The name of the contract is echidna test time and caller dot soul. Now, I don't want to be testing with the default 50,000 times. Instead, I'll just test it 5,000 times by typing dash dash test limit 5,000. And as expected, the test failed because Echidna was able to fast forward the timestamp by more than seven days and then call the function set fail. Now, however, if I were to extend this delay, for example, let's say 70 days, and then run the test again, Notice that the test passed and Echidna was not able to call the function set fail. This is because the default maximum timestamp that Echidna will fast forward is 7 days. So when we extend it to 70 days, Echidna will fail to call this function set fail. To extend the maximum timestamp to be greater than 7 days, then we'll need to create a config file, which I did over here, called time.yaml. If I open it, you can see here that I'm going to set maximum time today. Currently, this is in seconds and this is seven days. We will extend this to 70 days. So that's multiplied by 10 by adding another zero. Save the file, open the terminal again, and then we'll run the same test. This time, we'll also pass in the config file by typing dash dash config time.yaml. And now notice that the test failed again. This is because Echidna was now able to fast forward the timestamp up to 70 days, which we set inside the config file. So this was an example of how to test timestamps in Echidna. Next, let me show you how to test callers with Echidna. Echidna has three default callers. So these are the addresses that will be calling this contract. You can change these default callers inside the config file as well. To show you that these three addresses are the default callers, I've created a test function called echidna test sender, which would check that the sender is equal to one of the senders that I defined over here. This state variable sender is set when echidna calls this function set sender. When echidna calls this function, it sets the state variable sender to message.sender. Afterwards, echidna will run this test, echidna test sender, and make sure that this state variable sender is equal to one of the senders that I defined in here. We will run the test again. And notice that the test passed. This means that all of the sender, all of message.sender that was used to call this function set sender is equal to one of these three addresses. To make the test fail, if I change one of the addresses, for example, from one to three, and then run the test again. Notice that the test fail, 
And the counterexample that Akimna gave us was calling set sender with one of the default addresses. So these are the three default addresses that we'll be calling into your smart contract. And these addresses can be configured inside the config file.